Hi, everybody. We are back. The time is 9:10. Appreciate you watching Minnesota Live today. For 55 years, an organization just outside of the Twin Cities has helped to get kids excited about their environment. Dodge Nature Center operates on 460 acres of nature preserve within the cities of West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, and Cottage Grove. Later this month, they're offering spring break camp for kids of all ages. Cool. To kick off our staycation week, Lauren and Drago is live there this morning to learn more. Hi, Lauren. Good morning, Chris and Ellen. One of the things I love the most about living in the Twin Cities is we are just 10 minutes away from the heart of downtown St. Paul, and I'm in the middle of 500 acres of nature. So when you think about staycation week and getting outside, enjoying the great outdoors for spring break, there's really no better place to be than Minnesota. Um, I want to introduce you to Pam. She's one of the super nature geniuses here at Dodge Nature Center. <laughs> You're so kind. Um, I think naturalist might naturalist be your is perfect. proper title. Yes. Um, and the whole point of Dodge Nature Center is to connect families with nature and give educational experiences, but you're also having a lot of fun out here. Oh, we sure are. This is the perfect season. In reality, spring is coming. Um, <laughs> unbeknownst to us with all this snow, but yeah. you can hear it. The sun is shining. The sky is blue. We're actually hearing some birds, and this is when we will be tapping our maple trees oh to take the sap gosh. and turn it into delicious, sweet, sticky syrup. I love it. Pam, it's so funny. We are standing in about a foot of snow, and right before we on, Pam said, don't worry, though. It's, it's a dry snow. <laughs> so tell me how to tap. This is a maple tree. So this is a maple, and you can tell it's a maple by a few different ways. One telltale sign is those helicopter seeds. Maples all have oh. helicopter seeds. Another way to tell is the branches are always going to be like two arms coming out from the stem. Most trees in Minnesota will actually look more like an arm and a leg. Ah. So this tree qualifies. Now this is a pretty old tree, so the bark is a little thick, but I still think that we can tap into it. Okay. We're going to use a good old fashioned hand drill. Here at the center, we tap approximately 200 trees and we do it all by hand. Oh so we want to get through the bark into the buff colored wood. Is this hard what you're doing? You're getting, you're putting your muscles in. This is into my it. workout for the day. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Now, you said because it's cold out, it might actually be hard mm -hmm. to get sap out today. You like when it's around that 32 degrees out. Yes. Right? To get the sap to actually flow, we need perfect conditions. Usually that will occur in the spring. So we need it to be below 32 degrees in the evening and above 32 in the day. All right. That's kind of what wakes the tree up and starts to make the sap flow throughout the tree. Got it. We so, only have a little bit of time left, but what happens next? So we put our hole into the tree, and what we're going to do is just literally tap a little spile in. Hence the name tap. That makes sense. And then, in order to prevent it dropping onto the ground and wasting that delicious sap, we're going to put a bucket on. So you don't waste anything. Nope, that will catch it for us. And then in the next coming weeks, we'll be collecting these buckets on a daily basis and turning the sap into syrup. How much sap will come out of a tree like this Ooh, this year? Oh, you could get out of a tree this size, maybe 100 gallons over the course of the, of the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Pam, I can't wait to see what's next. So we're going to check back in with you in a little bit. Uh, guys, we're taking a little jaunt down to the cauldron. To the cauldron. And we see what happens with sap next. Um, I'll also get to taste some maple sugar Yum. that is made out of the sap that comes out of this nice. tree. Nice. Well, well, maybe bring, some, bring your bucket back. <laughs> yeah, don't you have to get like seven trillion? I was going to bring some Eggo waffles in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, so maybe I will. That's a good idea. You have idea. to have like seven trillion gallons of sap to make a drop of syrup, right? Something like that. I think that ratio is close, not yeah. quite there. I don't want to be a sensationalist. We heard 40 <laughs> gallons to one. Mm. So okay. when you think about one. the size okay. of that bucket, that's a lot of buckets of sap to create all of the maple syrup <laughs> that, that is, but we consume every year. Good job with Lauren doing her homework. I know, there, I was going to say, she was told math she, wouldn't be a part of this report. The ratio. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now let's get back now to producer Lauren and Drago. She's kicking off our staycation week at the Dodge Nature Center in West St. Paul. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Good morning, Chris. Remember we were talking about sap? It takes 40 gallons of sap to produce one gallon of, are we, are we on, Bill? To produce one gallon of maple syrup. Well, I want to show you.
This is what sap looks like coming out of a tree. It basically looks like water because it almost is water. You can just see some sugar floating in there. It kind of looks like glitter. That's why it takes so much. Uh, to make some maple syrup. And this is where it all happens, in front of the cauldron. I'm with Pam here, um, and it's a little bit cold, which is why we don't have a lot of sap right now in the season. Uh, but what happens when we come down here? Well, once the sap finally starts to run, we will be collecting it on a daily basis. And what we'll do is we'll bring the sap here to our cauldron, where we have an open fire, and we will cook it. Because the idea behind making Go ahead. Making syrup is we are going to remove some of the water so that we're left with the ste sweet, sticky syrup. Sometimes we can even remove all of the water completely and we'll actually end up with delicious maple sugar. And all of this is, this is purely what came out of sap. This came, came out from the tree. tree. Yeah. Turned into syrup and then later turns into sugar. It's absolutely unbelievable. And kids and families can come right here to Dodge Nature Center to learn about this. Yes, we're having some weekend programs that will be focused on maple syrup. And then the last week of March, we'll be having some camps for kids kindergarten through eighth grade. And one of them will focus on maple syrup as well. Well, tell me about spring break camp because I know families are looking for stuff to do that's local in here. Uh, they're not going, not as many of us can go to Disney World this spring, you know, but that's true. <laughs> we can have fun in our own backyards, including spring break camp. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, fun classes that you're doing yeah. to bring kids right into nature, including one called Seek and Saute. We are. We're that? having one where we're going to be bringing kids out into the woods and we're going to be foraging, gathering things that we can actually eat out here in the forest. Another will focus on maple syruping. We're having one that's um, uh, some uh, traditional technology where well, kids will get to use axes and hammers and tools that they might not get to do at home. How fun. What do you love about being here at Dodge Nature Center? Oh, I love being outside, um, even in the cold, but I do love the interaction with the students. There's nothing quite like seeing a kid's face light up when they enjoy something here at the Nature Center. Well, uh, we got to wrap things up, Pam. I think we could spend hours here. Uh, Chris and Ellen, I can't hear you right now, but we have some maple sugar here. Can we try it, Pam? Absolutely. Again, this is completely made out of sap, which is then made out of sugar, which is then made or then made into the sap syrup. became syrup that became sugar. And I'm going to give you a little handful here. And how many hours does it take to oh, make something uh, like this? For, this? for the sugar, not too long because a lot of the water has already been removed. Oh, my gosh. Isn't it delicious? It tastes like real sugar. Look at that. You only <laughs> get that in nature. It is only... real sugar. <laughs> You're right. It is real sugar. I mean, it tastes like the fake sugar that I'm used to having. <laughs> guys, that's all we have. I'm going to spend the afternoon here in nature. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Lauren. And uh, served out of a log. I know. Very that's authentic. That's a very Minnesota yes, thing yes. right there, right? Hey, and I will never take syrup for granted now that I know how much time no, and how much it takes to make that. That's... You shouldn't take anything for no, granted. No, really, I will not. I will not, syrup, and I do not. Yeah. <laughs> well, to get your kiddo or your grandkids signed up for spring break camp at Dodge Nature Center, you can find information on minnesotalive.com.